Hello again. I hope that you are doing well and having a lovely day. For the next several lessons, we're going to be working on fractions. Up until now, we've been doing a lot of things with our calculators, especially when we are working with complicated decimals or large numbers. Fractions are everywhere, especially in the heating and air conditioning trades. Tools are labeled with fractional measurements. Diagrams are labeled with fractional measurements. And quite honestly, it's important for you to be able to work with fractions quickly and easily, especially when they're small. You don't want your crew or your customers to lose faith in your abilities because you had to use a calculator to add one third and two thirds. So let's get started. As usual, the first thing we want to do is talk about vocabulary. A fraction contains two values. We have a numerator and a denominator. We've talked about those before. They're separated by the fraction bar, which indicates division. The job of the numerator is to tell you how many equally sized pieces you have. The word numerator comes from the word enumerate, which means to count. So we're counting things. The numerator tells us how many we have. The denominator tells us how many equally sized pieces make a whole. The root of the word denominator is nomen, which means to name. The denominator not only tells you how many size pieces make a whole, but it also tells you what those pieces are called. If you have three sevenths, you have three pieces, it takes seven pieces to make a whole, and each of those pieces is called a seventh. So let's start off with some easy stuff. Writing a fraction to represent the shaded portion of the figure. The first thing we need to do is figure out the denominator. How many pieces make a whole? And we just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pieces make a whole. And then we look at how many pieces are shaded. And of course, that's easy. We can do without counting. It is three. So there are three shaded pieces, 16 pieces make a whole, and each of those pieces is called a 16th. I don't know about you, but I could use a little more coffee today. Here we have a coffee pot that holds 12 cups of coffee. At noon, only five cups of coffee remain in the pot. What fraction of the coffee has been taken? What fraction of the coffee remains? Well, let's see. Let's talk about the fraction that remains first. Five cups remain. But it takes 12 cups to make a whole. So what that means for us is that 5 twelfths of the coffee remains. How much of the coffee has been taken? For that we'd have to subtract. 12 minus 5 is 7. Seven cups taken out of the 12 cups it takes to make a whole. Guess I should have left you a little bit more space, huh? Seven 
twelfths have been taken. So there's one answer, and here's the other. And maybe we'll just separate this from the rest of the page like that. All right. Fractional forms of the number one. The cool thing about fractions is that there are a lot of different ways to express yourself and still say the same thing. If we want to talk about one whole, we can just call it one. One whole cookie, not broken into any pieces, one. However, if we take this cookie and cut it into two pieces, it's still a whole cookie because we have two of the pieces and it takes two to make a whole. Two halves is exactly the same as one. If we took this cookie and chopped it into three equal pieces, those of course are called thirds, we still have all three pieces, and it takes three to make a whole. Three-thirds is equal to one. We could cut the cookie into four pieces. And I assure you, I'm sure that you see where this is going now. Four-fourths is equal to one. Let's flip the page. The point that we're trying to make here is that if the numerator and the denominator are equal, then the fraction has a value of 1. So if the numerator equals the denominator, the value of the fraction is 1. So when they ask us to write a fraction whose value is equal to 1 with a numerator of 183, that's really easy. The numerator is 183, and to have a value equal to 1, the denominator needs to match it. Okay, an improper fraction has a value greater than 1. Actually, greater than or equal to 1. The numerator is greater than or equal to the denominator. A proper fraction goes the other way. It has a value less than 1. The numerator is smaller than the denominator. All right, take a second, pause the recording, circle all of the improper fractions in the list, and then come back. Did you circle 17 over 31? No, because the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Did you circle 17 over 3? Yes, because the numerator is larger than the denominator. Did you circle 17 over 17? Hopefully you did, because an improper fraction, the numerator is greater than or equal to the denominator. This value is equal to 1. 31 over 17? Hopefully you also circled that one as well, because the numerator is greater than the denominator. All right, on with our vocabulary. A mixed number is a whole number added to a proper fraction.
So for example, we might have a mixed number of four and two thirds. If we tried to make a picture of four and two thirds, well, that wouldn't be so hard to do. We would need, let's see, um, let's use candy bars today because I'm kind of hungry. We would need four candy bars. And each of those candy bars would be chopped into three equal pieces. And we'll shade all of those pieces. So that's four whole candy bars, but then we need two thirds. So I need one more candy bar and we will shade two out of the three pieces. And that would be a picture representation of four and two thirds. As it turns out, every mixed number can be written as an improper fraction. And even before we talked about what an improper fraction was, you could have done this because we know what the numerator represents and we know what the denominator represents. So let's see, oh, we should fill in this blank. Every mixed number can also be written as an improper fraction. All right, so if we look back at the picture and we just counted up pieces, we have three, six, nine, 12, 13, 14 of them. And of course it takes three pieces to make a whole. So as an improper fraction, this is 14 thirds. But we also know that we can talk about it as four and two thirds. So we have two ways to represent the same amount. If we want to convert a mixed number to an improper fraction, hmm, I need a little more space, so I'm gonna slide this up just a little bit. There, that should be good enough. The first thing that we need to do is to multiply The whole number by the denominator. This tells us how many pieces are in the holes. So if we come back up to our picture, we've got three, six, nine, twelve. I could have gotten to 12 a lot faster just by multiplying 4 times 3. The 4 is the whole number, the 3 is the denominator. But then I've got these two extra pieces. I have to add those on. The two extra pieces are represented by the numerator. So step 2 is to add the numerator. There's a step three, but we'll come back to that in just a second. Let's do this um, with four and two thirds. Here we go. Four and two thirds. And we want to end up with 14 thirds when we get done. So here's what's happening. Three times four is 12 plus two gives us 14. But this isn't exactly true as an equation just yet. 4 and 2 thirds is not equal to 14. We've forgotten about the denominator. The denominator tells us how many pieces make a whole. And that never changed. It's always been that three pieces made a whole for this picture. So we always keep the denominator. the same. So if we had a mixed number where A was the whole number, B is the numerator, 
and c is the denominator, we could rewrite that as an improper fraction. We would take c, multiply it by a, and then add b, and we would keep the denominator the same. All right, let's give this a shot. Flip the page. We're going to convert 15 and 7 firsts to an improper fraction. Here we go. 15 and 7 firsts is equal to take the denominator, which is 31, multiply by 15, because that's the whole number, add in the numerator. Keep the same denominator. All right, let's see what we have. 31 times 15 plus 7 is equal to 472. And that's 472 thirty-firsts. There, see? Not so bad. Every improper fraction re represents either a mixed number or a whole number. You'll remember from that list of improper fractions, we had that one time where the improper fraction was equal to 1. So we can end up with whole numbers as well. If we want to go from an improper fraction to a mixed number, essentially we do what the fraction bar tells us to do. We divide. The whole number is the quotient. The remainder will be the numerator. And that's the numerator of the proper fraction. And of course, just like before, we keep the same denominator. Let's slide back up to the page before. And look at our picture again. Here we have 14 thirds. 3 goes into 14 four times with 2 left over. And it still takes 3 pieces to make a whole. And so that's what we do. We just divide and keep track of that remainder. And we learned how to find remainders a long time ago. So I know that this won't be a problem for you at all. All right, back to the page where we were. Let's check out example six. We'd like to convert 85 sevenths to either a mixed number or a whole number, whichever the case might be. So here we go. 85 divided by seven. 7 goes into 8 one time, 1 times 7 is 7. Subtract, bring down the 5. 7 goes into 15 twice, 2 times 7 is 14. Subtract, we have a remainder of 1. So 85 sevenths is equal to 12, because that's the whole number part. 7 goes into 85 12 whole times. The remainder gives us the new numerator. The denominator stays the same. Okay, now it's your turn. Pause the recording, 
convert 2,876 thirteenths to a mixed number or a whole number, and then come back and we'll check your work. Okay, let's see how you did. You might remember from the beginning of the semester, we learned how to use the calculator to help us figure out what the remainder is. So we still need 13 dividing into 2,876. But we can let the calculator help us out a little bit. 2,876 divided by 13. And we see that it goes in there 221 times with some stuff left over. The decimal portion has nothing to do with the remainder, but the whole number is something that we want. 221 whole times. 221 multiplied by 13 is 2,873. Subtract, and we find that we're left with 3 as a remainder. So 2,876 thirteenths is exactly the same as 221 and 3 thirteenths. All right, I hope that one went well for you. Let's see what's on the next page. Here we have your basic ruler. With fractions, there are a lot of different times where we might encounter fractions, but in the workplace, you're likely to see things that have denominators that are powers of two, halves, fourths, eighths, sixteenths, thirty seconds, things like that. The standard ruler is divided into 16 pieces. There are a lot of other types of rulers out there. Some of them are divided into five pieces. Some are divided into 10 or 64 pieces or even 100. This one is divided into 16 pieces. So let's take a look at what some of these pieces are. Here in the middle, the longest line segment represents one half. The next longest set of segments is half of the half. In other words, one fourth. Two fourths is here at one half, and three fourths matches up over here. If we come down to the next shorter set of segments, now we're talking about half of a fourth. If you had four pieces and you cut each of them into half, then you would have eight pieces. So this is now one eighth. One eighth, two eighths is one fourth. Over here we have three eighths. Four eighths is one half. Here we have five eighths. Six eighths is the same as three fourths. And the next marking is for seven eighths. If you had eight pieces and you cut each of them in half, you would have 16 pieces. So the tiniest marks on the standard ruler measure 1 16th of an inch. Pause the recording again, fill in the labels for the remaining segments, and then come back. Okay, here's mine. How does yours look? Each of those teeny tiny little segments is labeled as a sixteenth and the numerator is an odd number. If we count it over to say six sixteenths, one, two, three, four, five, six sixteenths would be exactly the same as three eighths. And that's why we don't see the sixteenth measurements with an even numbered numerator because those have actually already been assigned of different uh, I don't want to say value, a different uh, way of expressing that value. We've already done those. All right, so if we came down and we were looking at this ruler here, what measurement would we have at arrow D? Well, let's see. D is, oh, way over here on the left, less than one, so we don't have a whole number. And it's at a teeny tiny mark, so it's some number of sixteenths, and we'll just count. One, two, three, four, five. 
D has a measurement of 5 sixteenths of an inch. Try C on your own and then come back. All right, let's check out C. C is, oh, way over here, a little bit short of three. So it's two whole inches plus some more. Two and, well, let's see. Three would be where six sixteenths is, and this is one less. So we have 15 sixteenths. What if we put a marking in here, let's call it G. And let's put it um, right about here, right there. We'll call that G. Where is G? Well, it's more than two inches, so the whole number is two. And each of these little markings is worth 1 16th, so we could say 1 16th, 2 16th, 3, 4, 5, 6 16th. But that's not one of those teeny tiny little markings. It's a little bit larger than that. That's actually one of the markings that represented an eighth of an inch. So we could go from here to here, 1 eighth, 2 eighths, three-eighths and come up with exactly the same amount, it would just have a different appearance. And that's something we'll talk about in the next lesson. On the back page, we look at a different type of ruler. This inch is not divided into 16 pieces. How many pieces is it divided into? Well, we're just going to count one, two, three, four, five. So this ruler is divided into fifths. And this is a picture of an actual ruler. I mean, well, it's a, it's a drawing of an actual ruler. But uh, I checked, they, these exist, and they're actually not really all that uncommon, as long as you're looking in the right place. So if each of these uh, markings tells us where one-fifth is, then A would be at two-fifths, and B would be larger than an inch, so we'd have one whole inch, and then one more space to the right, one and one-fifth. And of course, if I asked you to write that as an improper fraction, you could. Five times one is five, plus one is six. That would be talking about six-fifths of an inch. One, two, three, four, five, six spaces over. Okay, and that's it for now. Good luck with your homework, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.